Ladies and gentlemen, in the vast colosseum of ideological jousting, destiny, that metaphysical mariner navigating the tempestuous seas of discourse, sets his sights on the contentious verbal duet between Dr. Umar Johnson and the auditory maestro destiny. Comes in here, got our manager that he hired to come in here and clean this apartment. Joe might not know who the fuck cleans this apartment. Something just hit me. Shoot. Are you mixed race? No. <laughs> or you a bunny hopper? Yes. Per, per your, oh, that's, that's why that's you have true. a liberal that's perspective because you go home that's to a not white true. woman. Yes, but that's not true. I felt this way before I met my white girlfriend. So help me understand how you could be so passionate about the black I'm not. I'm, not the, pa I'm passionate. I'm, I'm, I'm an objective thinker. I don't, if something makes sense. So you have no loyalty to the black community? No, I do have. I probably employ more blacks than you. Okay, so Ooh. help me understand that you employ more blacks than me, but you go home to a white woman. Why you don't have a black woman? Because I fell in love with a white woman, not a black woman. Why did you black I did. Woman? I fell in love with a black woman. We broke up. Okay. And why didn't you find it fall in love with another black woman? I did that too. We broke up. Okay. Oh, shit. And why didn't you get another one and another one and another one until you found the right one? Because I, I met a white woman that I fell in love with, and that's the person that I And I'm you're with being today. disingenuous about that's something. Not true. And let me tell you what you're true. being disingenuous about. True. Romance mm -hmm. is a function of focus and opportunity. Oh, if God, cringe. If I want to date an Asian, I'm going to put myself around Asian women True. so I can find one. True. If I want to date a Latino, I'm going to put myself around Latino women mm -hmm. so I can date one. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to marry a black woman, you would have put yourself around black women so you can find one. So how did you end up with the Caucasian? No disrespect to her. No, not at all. What I'm telling you is the places that I go socially are not just mon mon mono. Mon so what? I went I'm to a white college, whoa, whoa. white college, white college, I'm white answer. job. Listen. I never bunny hopped. Listen to my question. Let me answer you. That wasn't my priority. My priority wasn't, yo, I'm not closed off to dating Latino women. I'm not closed off to dating Asian women. I'm not closed off to dating white women. So again, in my search for romance, all of those things were on the table. But you do me. understand that by not being I mean, with a black I'm, woman, I'm you undermine the opinion. success of the black community. That's your opinion. That's my opinion. Then tell me how the black community benefits from you having a white woman. If, if, I, if I lend to the financial up, up, uh, uplifting. uplifting of that community, one, that's one thing. Two, if I'm helping to educate the people in that particular community, th that's a benefit. So Does not your white woman benefit more from your economics than any black person? Yeah, probably. Exactly. So, so why can't they both be mutually beneficial? You, you want to know why? Because she belongs to the group that is responsible for the historical oppression of your race. So, so why would you voluntarily go over and marry into that? Because when you marry the woman, whoa, whoa, whoa. you don't just marry the woman or date the woman. You're dating her community and her culture. So and given the history of us and them, why would you dare align yourself with that if you care about us? Let me ask you a question. I want you to, I want you to let me get my yes, answers yes, out. Go ahead. So, <clears throat> hypothetically. Cool than most but i've seen him like talk to like smart people <laughs> i'm not gonna lie this nigga needs to talk to destiny but destiny be defending black people a lot when it comes to shit 97 like this, so year old it. nyc dying do it just still to do serves it. their coke the old-fashioned way myron oh myron is actually smart as fuck destiny is smart better than most okay cute all right the continuation of that clip, I, you know what? I don't care. Don't care. I don't care about black people that have this weird, uh, like, what is the imprint? It's like the, it's like racist white people, um, black people, and then progressives love black people so much that they get into the savior complex. And then there are black people like Dr. Umar who think that every black human should be a black savior and represent the black community and maximize your life for the black community at all points in time. That sh that's just a flip side of the other coin to where every time a black person does something bad, you blame all black people. That's what racist white people do. Racist black people say that every time a black person does something good, it needs to benefit the entire black community. That's bad. Like, let people live. Obviously, in some circumstances, maybe you have some obligation to your community, depending on whatever. But, like, the idea that as a black person, you need to maximize every single facet of your existence to uplift the black community, that sounds exhausting. I would kill myself, okay? I'd rather be killed by a million Blue Lives Matter, conservative cop, whatever, the f than have to maximize my existence as a black man in, in the United States to make sure that every single point in time, I'm appeasing other nation of Islam lunatic black losers that are saying that my whole life needs to be dedicated to uplifting my community. That, sh that sounds like AIDS. Okay. For example, courts describe the argument as an amalgamation of theories, conjecture, and speculation, allegations sorely wanting of relevant or reliable evidence, strained legal arguments without merit, assertions that did not prove by any standard of proof that any legal votes were cast, and even a fundamental and obvious misreading of the Constitution. Okay. <clears throat> um...
Last spam and all stop. Bro, I don't. The ensuing clash of perspectives, reminiscent of the philosophical debates in Plato's Academy, becomes a cerebral battleground where destiny, the intellectual gladiator, unsheaths his rhetorical glaive. In the inimitable cascade of destiny's linguistic acrobatics, he recalls at Dr. Umar's assertions on race relations, as if witnessing the tragicomedies of Aristophanes unfold on the amphitheater of discourse. The cringeworthy dance of disingenuous arguments about interracial relationships becomes a cacophony that reverberates through the corridors of intellectual purgatory. Destiny, that modern-day Diogenes with a keyboard, bears his skepticism at the notion of racial obligation, akin to the Promethean chains that bind individuals to the rock of communal expectations. The expectation that one must be a black savior, as if cast in a Homeric epic to uplift the entire community, becomes a Sisyphean burden that destiny rejects with the alacrity of a Stoic philosopher. The resonant timber of Dr. Johnson's oratory, reminiscent of the dulcet tones of an ancient lyre, has captivated the auditory senses of a diverse audience, transcending the temporal boundaries of space and time. Dr. Umar Johnson's popularity, a phenomenon akin to the aphelion of a celestial body in the firmament of public attention, finds its roots in the fertile soil of his articulate enunciations and passionate articulations on matters of racial consciousness. His linguistic prowess, a symphony of eloquence akin to the literary sonnets of Shakespearean drama, enchants the minds of those drawn to the kaleidoscopic hues of his ideological palette. In the grandiloquent amphitheater of public thought, Dr. Umar Johnson emerges as a herald, a modern-day Cassandra whose pronouncements echo through the corridors of racial discourse. His ability to distill complex issues into digestible intellectual elixirs, reminiscent of the alchemists of old, endears him to the multitudes seeking intellectual nourishment in the arid landscape of societal discussions. The charisma exuded by Dr. Johnson, a charismatic aura akin to the resplendence of Cleopatra's court, serves as a magnetic force, drawing individuals from diverse backgrounds into the orbit of his ideas. His popularity becomes a cultural crucible where disparate threads of thought are woven into a rich tapestry, a conceptual mosaic that resonates with the yearnings of a generation grappling with the vicissitudes of identity and societal constructs. However, in the grand tapestry of popularity, there exists a chiaroscuro that demands scrutiny. The obfuscation of nuance and the potential for the cult of personality to overshadow critical inquiry become Sisyphean challenges in the ascent of intellectual luminaries. It is imperative to navigate the labyrinth of adulation with a discerning eye, for in the realm of ideas, the apotheosis of any individual must not eclipse the pursuit of truth and intellectual rigor. In the grandiloquent symphony of destiny's disapproval, the rejection of the black savior archetype emerges as a veritable Ozymandian decree, a proclamation against the ephemeral monuments of communal expectations. Destiny, with the poise of an oratorical alchemist, transmutes the leaden weight of racial obligation into the golden pursuit of individual well-being. The mention of prejudiced white individuals becomes a metaphysical exploration into the dark recesses of collective blame, a Faustian narrative where the sins of the few cast a spectral pall over the entirety of a community. Destiny, the digital demagogue, thrusts his rhetorical sword against the gorgon of prejudiced black individuals who, like Pygmalion statues, yearn for every good action to metamorphose into a communal benefaction. As Destiny's soliloquy cascades into the final movements, he stands as a digital Socrates, questioning the exhausting expectations foisted upon individuals solely based on the hue of their skin. The rejection of the burden to uplift an entire community becomes a modern iteration of at last shrugging off the weight of the world. In conclusion, destiny, that cerebral odysseus of the internet's vast sea, navigates the stormy currents of racial discourse with the acuity of an allegorical Ulysses.
the rejection of racial obligations, the castigation of the black savior archetype, and the repudiation of prejudiced blame echo through the cybernetic agora. Destiny leaves us with the resounding proclamation that individual well-being need not be sacrificed on the altar of communal expectations, inviting us to contemplate the uncharted waters of racial discourse with a newfound philosophical lens.